Okay, everyone, so we've gotten an overview of the class. Let's get into specifics, because one of the first things I want to talk about is just touching the iceberg of coding. Uh, people ask me, well, do I need to know coding anymore? Because I can make a great website in Dreamweaver. I can make a great website in WordPress, Wix, Weebly, Joomla, a bunch of software. And those software, I, I recommend. They're very powerful, full-featured software. But I still recommend to have some experience in actual coding, because you might not have some feature in Dreamweaver, let's say, to accomplish a task. You might not have an easy way in WordPress or Squarespace or whatever to accomplish some task. And if you know a little HTML, the coding languages, the languages of the web, you might be able to accomplish it more effectively and efficiently. So we're going to look at a little bit of programming today in HTML, and if you've never done this before, it'll be a big culture shock, but it's not going to be that complicated. And we're not going to do it a lot. We're going to look at it one day today, and then a little bit later, in two or three weeks, and then after that we'll be in a nice, safe editing environment. But I guess um, we'll just do it very old school. We've got Dreamweaver here, but we'll do it pretty old school because you might not have Dreamweaver at home. So um, if you're on Windows, I'll tell you what to do. If you're on the Mac, I'll tell you what to do. If you're on Windows, go ahead and go to your Start menu. And on the bottom here, search for Notepad. So you'll get the plain old Notepad app. If you're on the Mac, uh, go to the Apps screen and open Text Edit. So go to your Apps screen. Start light and get over to Text Edit. Dreamweaver is a little bit more full-featured for this task that we're going to do, but it's a little too much. And actually, if you would like to further code um, on Windows, I recommend uh, a software called Notepad++. And on Mac, I recommend Brackets. There's plenty of other ones. Everyone's got their their favorite code editor. It's always a big argument which is better. Uh, you can do Vim if you want. They made Brackets available for... Uh, it's also those. Windows. Yes, I like it for both but I've used Notepad++ most often. So Windows or Mac, there's a software called Brackets, and uh, we've also got Notepad++. So um, that's a couple of editing software for coding, but we've got just plain old Notepad or text edit. We've got a plain old document here. What we'll do is, again, what we're about to do is delve a little bit into this into the coding. Every website is made out of code, um, usually two or three languages. The classic one is HTML. Here's the Google home page. I'm looking at Google here, and then I'm looking at its code here. A big wall of gibberish. It seems like gibberish if you've never touched HTML. And we're going to code just a little bit to make a very basic website, and that'll be tied to the first homework assignment. I want to do this to show you that you can do this without any special software. Um, and sometimes it's very useful to be able to just dig into the code instead of finding the right button to accomplish the task. Even me that I make websites for, for companies, and oftentimes it's a WordPress website, I still get into a lot the code to change things that are not so easy to change in WordPress or that uh, would be more complex. I can quickly get into the code and do that. We teach a class on coding here, and that's CIS 152. So if you want more coding, and eventually, from what I hear, this is going to be part of the a requirement of the major because coding is very valuable. So in our empty document here on, on Windows, what you're going to do is go to File, Save As. If you brought a flash drive today, you can save it on your flash drive. If you didn't, let's click Save As and just save to the desktop. And then on Text Edit, also go up to your Save menu, File menu, 
save as. And on here, we want to write in quotes. So, you know, quotes, we want to write this in quotes because text, a notepad wants to save this as a plain old text file, not as a website. We're going to force notepad, we're going to tell it, no, save this as a website. So let's put today's date dot html. Put it in quotes to force the app to save it as an HTML file, not a text file. Today's date dot html. We're about to create an HTML document, a basic website. I saved it to my desktop. There it is there. I've got a blank document. Anyone need any help at this point? Okay, so there's other, there's other better, more civilized code editors than Notepad, but we can get by. Again, Notepad++, plus plus, text wrangler, bracket, etc. Yes? So this language, HTML, was invented in about 1989. So websites are about 26 years old, 25, 26. They're a few years old. Um, the internet is older. It's from about the 60s. But websites are about you know 26 years old, 27 years old. And anyone can do this because this language was invented and given away for free. It was not patented, it was not trademarked, it was not locked down, it was given away for free. Um, so we can make websites. Um, all of our websites are going to be written in HTML, basically, this language. And all of these codes are written in a certain way. Do you see on the keyboard you've got the less than symbol, which is shift comma. So type shift comma. It's the less than symbol, right? One less than two. But that one and its pair, which is the greater than symbol, we use over and over and over on websites. So go ahead and type less than, greater than, and then in between those two angle brackets, we're going to type exclamation point, which is shift one, and then d-o-c-t-y-p-e space html. Some of HTML codes are very esoteric, meaning like who knows what they mean? They, they, they don't make sense. Some HTML codes make sense. They're, they're defined in a way that kind of makes sense, and some don't. Here I'm saying doc type HTML. It kind of tells you what it's doing. It's saying this document type, this kind of document I'm working with, is HTML. Easy. So what follows is going to be a website. At the end there, press enter to go to the next line. Make sure the first line looks like that. Less than, exclamation point, doc type, space, HTML, clear that. That's a very first line that says this is a website. We're going to type again the less than and the greater than, but inside of that, then we're going to type HTML again. Notice just HTML. Because HTML is hypertext markup language. That means is we have this document where we mark uh, between here and here is a link. Between here and here is a picture. Between here and here is a paragraph. We mark it. And most of these tags, most of these codes have a pair. So we're starting HTML tag there. At the end, press enter a couple of times press enter two times, and then at the end we will write 
the HTML tag again, but this time with a slash. So it's the same less than, greater than, but then slash right there. It has to be right there. HTML. Here we're saying between this code and this code is the whole website. And most of the time we have pairs of tags. These are HTML tags. We're writing HTML code. Each of these is a tag. Let's back up. Tag, tag. Let's uh, back up in between the two tags there, HTML tags, and uh, press a, this time press a tab, T-A-B, press tab on the keyboard, just so that it indents. This is optional, because technically you can write HTML in one long line that goes off the edge of the page. It doesn't care. You can write a code on and on and on and on on one long line. But here we break it up just so that it's more readable. This tab doesn't matter. We could have written our code right here and it wouldn't care. But we're going to write it tabbed just so that we can read it a little bit. And again, if we were using something like Dreamweaver or Notepad++ or Brackets, we would have a much better code editor because they would color code it and help us fix our errors. Notepad is just a very basic editor, but we'll make do with this. We want to write another tag here, which is the head tag. <clears throat> angle brackets, head. That has a pair also. So press enter at the end of that two times. Tab it. And then close the head tag, end the head tag. It's got a pair. HTML. You've got open HTML, close HTML. Open head, close head. And most tags have a pair. One of the ones that doesn't is that doc type. That one doesn't have a pair. After head, press enter, and then we'll type body. The body tag, and that has a pair. This is technically a web page. This is enough for a web page, for a website. It's going to be a very boring website. So let's do one more thing and then we'll see how boring. Go back to your body. <coughs> go, be, go between the body tags and then tab it a couple of times. Tab once, tab twice. Again, this is just to read it. It doesn't matter. It can be, be all on the same left aligned. But here I tabbed inside the body. And let's type something for real here. Let's type hello world. This is a classic programmer's joke. Every single programmer for decades, when they learn a brand new co programming language, the first thing you learn is how to make it say hello world. So we've written enough code here to make it say hello world. And the way we're going to see this result is we're going to go to save up on the save menu file menu save it and if you're on windows you're going to see the you're going to see your website on the desktop with the internet explorer icon double click it and that should open a web browser on the mac i believe you do the same thing wherever you saved this file mine's on the desktop go ahead and double click it it should open in the web browser if it doesn't i'll check you in a moment but if it worked you should get the web browser Hello world. What kind of website? Raise your hand if that worked. Great. Anyone need a little help? We want to make sure we see hello world and double click the file to be on the website. Anyone 
anything else? Um, I don't know, it's kind of finicky, but I was on here talking about how I'm a complete liar. Closing time? Yeah. And I have to do some things to it. So I have to do Sublime's like going to be like this crap. Oh, this you're going to have to do some of the There's one that I've heard of. I mean, this one's good for bad news. I've used it for, for a large file, but it freezes up the least. Interesting. Yeah, it seems like an auto, like when you download it, it like tries to download an additional piece of file, which is good. And it's smaller than you don't use it without downloading records, without extract. What is that? I'm not sure. I think I downloaded the extract. I might have already had it. This is smart. Yeah, this is smart. Or <laughs> they also it's about know. time they do a little bit of monster. This is complimentary. This is complimentary. So, we're kind of always like, oh, yes. That's cool. Yeah, so you, you can make them like iOS. Yeah, you can make them like J, J, like J, 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 Then that's great. I used to subscribe to them. Something on the uh, iOS market. Yeah, you can send it to the license and pay you some money. Yeah. Yeah. 
they come up with some good stuff. Average shirt looks really good. They sit down and wear lots of bands. Yeah. That's one thing. So did everyone see Hello World? Yeah. OK, so the point here is that we are writing some HTML to uh, get then translated by the web browser. The web browser takes our code and translates it, because notice what only showed up on the web browser is the Hello World, none of this other stuff. But that other stuff is part of the foundation to make the website. So let's say I wanted to make hello world to appear big and bold uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some more markup I haven't told the web browser how to display hello world I just said make it display hello world so instead we're gonna make it be big and bold like this we're gonna back up where you've got hello and you're gonna go right before the H and we're gonna type another tag so it's gonna be the same sort of way here the angle brackets but it'll be H1 and so that means this will be a heading, number one. It'll be big and bold and important looking, kind of like my paper right here. You see that there's something big and bold at the top here, and then there's smaller text elsewhere. So this is sort of like this has been marked as a heading one. It's big and bold. But this document in the real world, only this part is bold. The rest is not, because we said start H1 here and stop H1 there. So we have to tell it here where to stop it, at the end of that line. So we have the opening heading one tag, the closing heading one tag. So between these two we've marked it, big and bold. Let's see how that looks different. Go back up to File, Save, and open your HTML file again. And look at that, look at that difference. Before H1, it looked like that, normal text. After H1, big and bold and important looking. So this is HTML. This is marking the document to either look a certain way, behave a certain way. And what we're writing here is one of the three common languages of the web, HTML. We're going to look at CSS and a tiny bit of JavaScript also today and that'll be your first homework actually. So let's say here, um, do you notice in my case I've got the, in my web browser I've got one tab for the old version and then a new tab opened up. Both of these have a tab. And oftentimes when you're on a website doesn't the tab up here say something meaningful? Like welcome home or sign in or something? Well, we can edit what appears in that tab as well at the top of the browser. We've made this say hello world in the main body of the document. And we've got this head section. So in the head section, we will make it say something up in this title tab. So let's back up to the head section.
tab that and we'll write the tag title. And that has a pair. Most of these have a pair. Did you notice that when I wrote H1, H1 is on the same line opening and closing, and these other ones have been one line and the next line. It doesn't care. It doesn't matter. You can keep them on one line, multiple lines. So just for practice, we will also close the title tag here on the same line. That would be the same as moving it down to the next line. But we'll keep it on the same line. In between the title tags here, let's write CIS 255. So after this change, save it, and then open it again in the web browser. One big mistake when people say it doesn't work is because you haven't saved it. Make sure you save it, then open your web browser again, open the web page in the web browser again, and you should now see it's big and bold here. And over here, that one says CIS255. Did everyone get that? Okay, let's go back to our code. Let's say we wanted to then add um, a little bit of visual interest. I wanted to add a picture. We have a tag for that too. Inside of the body tag, after hello world, let's press enter, and then tab twice, just so that we go under hello world. We're going to create this tag to show an image. So if it's a tag, it's got the same angle brackets again, but this time it's IMG, not OMG, IMG image. We're saying, let's show an image here. But this kind of tag is special in different ways because it does not have a pair. It's just one tag, one self-closing tag like that. But what's also different is it also has um, attributes. It's a, it has extra features like, what picture do you mean? So in the image tag, my cursor is on the G, press a space, I'm still in the tag, I'm still in the angle brackets. Next I'll add the attribute src equals quote end quote. Quote is right next to the enter. Right, You've got the plain old apostrophe or shift apostrophe which is a double, which is a quote, quote end quote. So what we're saying here is let's display an image Here's the source of the image, and then we'll display an image. If we had an image on the same folder as my HTML file, so my HTML file is on the desktop, and if I had a picture right here, all that I would need to do is write the name of the picture, like let's say victor.jpg. And then it would see, okay, there's a picture called victor right in the same folder, let's display it. Don't write that because you have no picture on your desktop called victor.jpg. But what we can do also is have a full web address here. Don't write this either, but if we had a picture online, we can also say, show that picture from that website on my website. We can do that too. So what we're going to do is we're going to go borrow a picture from my website. Go to your web browser. Let's go to one of my websites where I've got here a picture to borrow. Go to the web and go to vmcinc.net, vmcink.net. There's a little picture of me on the bottom right corner, vmcink.net. And on the bottom right, you'll see my picture. If you right-click it, you should have a couple of ways to do this. Save picture. That'll work. Sometimes you get copy link. Save target as. Save target as. Your browser might say it's slightly different. So let's borrow my picture. It's on the website. You're going to right-click it. 
you have save target as, save picture as, whatever yours says, save as. And you're going to save it on the desktop or wherever you saved your file. Mine's on the desktop. So save, as, save picture as. It says where? On the desktop. Mine's going to get saved as vmcompost-instagram underscore blah, 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 blah. You can leave that name, or you can change the name of that simply to be victor.jpg. And so I'm saving my picture from my desktop, uh, from my website to my desktop. And in my code, now I can simply say image source is victor.jpg. Yes? Either way will work, but if you only copy the image address, what could happen is what if my website crashes and my picture is then unavailable? So then your website looks bad because my picture is missing. Okay. Both ways are valuable to do, not a problem, but that's one reason why we did it this way. Yes? If, uh, if a lot of code is done that way, where they're just cop copying the address from your site to get the picture, does that like slow your website down? It does. Because that, that HTML file, that website, is accessing your website, and if they're getting a lot of traffic, they're also getting traffic from you because they're going over to get your pictures. So, um, yeah, those, uh, I forget what that's called, but that has a name when people are, you know, leeching your pictures off your own site. So let's try to see if this worked. Image, which is IMG, SRC, source, equals victor.jpg, because I've got a picture on my desktop right there called victor.jpg. If yours is still called vmcompost-instagram, whatever, make sure you put that name or else it won't work. Let's see if it works. Save it. There it is. Hello world. Did that work for everyone? I need a little help on that. Yes. When you uh, when you press enter twice, is that a positioning? Could I have just done it one and it's still do it? Yes, this is very it's lenient. It's it's for layout and it's very lenient. Uh, you don't have to do the tabs. You don't have to do the two enters. It doesn't care. You can do it all all jumbled up together. As long as you write the code right, it'll work. But I do the enters and the tabs and such just so that I can make it more readable. But for the H1 hello and IMG, do they only set to be aligned on that column? Nope. So I can put them anywhere? Yes, anywhere, but they have to be logically where you want them. If you put image first, it will show the image first, and then the hello world. So it doesn't matter that order, but it doesn't matter like I've done here. I've tabbed it, or I'm going to press enter a lot, and it'll still be exactly the same. It's a very forgiving language. So see, oops. So see here, it's exactly the same. There's before, there's after. Same thing, even though I've got a bunch of enters here. <clears throat> Did everyone get your picture working? Do you have a bunch of like keywords uh, like grocery now? So then yes. Uh, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a great website that has the glossary of all of these codes and also extra lessons where you can keep learning for free. Uh, it's part of the homework, and I'll give it to you in a moment. Yes? All right. Let's take a quick look. <coughs> Okay, so we've got some text, we've got a picture, um, let's add a link. Let's say that I'm going to add some text and then 
that'll also be a link. When I click the text, it'll go to my website. So after the image tag, press enter, tab it. And this time, we're going to write the P tag, just P. That one does have a pair. And just for difference, I will break it into two lines. It could have been on one line. P tag, P for paragraph. <clears throat> have you noticed, I, I haven't mentioned it, uh, but have you noticed basically all of the code that we're writing is lowercase. That's the standard nowadays. When you're using the latest version of HTML, HTML5, which is what we're using right now, it's lowercase. Older websites would often be in uppercase, or sometimes mixing the cases. And technically, if you don't write it lowercase, it'll, it'll work. Again, it's up to the web browser to interpret your code and use it properly. But it's pretty lenient that the proper way is all lowercase like we're doing. All our tags are lowercase. And obviously, this is uppercase and so forth. But everything's lowercase. And in, in between this p tag, we can write a paragraph. We can write as, many, as much text as we want, and it'll appear like a plain paragraph. So let's say, visit Victor's website. So that's going to be a plain paragraph as opposed to the big, bold, important looking H1 tag. To see the result, save it, check it on the web. Should look something like that. The P tag paragraph made it like plain text. There's H1 tag translated, image tag, P tag. Victor. Yes. What would H2 do? Would that make a little smaller headline than H1? Exactly. Okay. So one of the cool things is that we can try those things, and if it doesn't work, undo it. But that's what happens. H1 is the biggest, right. boldest heading. H2 is a little smaller. H3 a little smaller. It goes down to H6. Um, and maybe H1 is not big enough. We'll talk about then what we can do to fix that with CSS. We'll get to that. So here, that's what I've got so far. And what I want is for this text here to be clickable. I want to click on it to go to my website. So we'll add another tag. We're going to add some more markup. I'm going to mark so that all of this text here becomes an active link. Active link. So we're going to need a tag. And it would make great sense to call this the link tag, but that would not be right. And we're actually going to use the A tag. And think about it as active link, but I believe it stands for anchor. And at the end of that line, we need where do we close it? Because if we didn't close it, everything that followed would be that one link. So imagine here, I've got one word as the active link, and I never closed it, and everything is a link. That would be weird. So I said A tag slash A tag, and it marks it right there, that's the active link. That one has a pair, but it's also similar to the image tag in that it needs attributes. What link? I don't know what link to go to. We have to tell it here. So inside of the A tag, put your mouse cursor right after the first A, before the angle bracket, press space. We should be in the angle brackets. We're going to add the attribute href equals quote end quote. Hypertext reference. What is the website we're trying to go to when we click that paragraph of text? So in between the quotes is where we write the website. And we write it like a complete website. So HTTP colon slash slash vmcink.net. So try that. Type that, save it, check it in the web browser, and you should see that that little line of text is now an active link, a hyperlink. 
should go back to my website. Can it work for everyone? Does anyone need any help? No, I didn't have my own day. Usually at that point, it's
Yeah. Or, well, I used to have else. I quit. I quit the game. So, so I did it. It was like this shitty company that I. This is like. Took, you know, just like money to have brothers that were at this game. Yeah, yeah, so when they felt like showing me to work after a Saturday night, there's four hours at the gym, and they were just nice. working all day. Yeah. And the guy, like, the actual guy who worked with all the coding um, at the CTO and the uh, uh, technical architect, they were on that roster. And that was the body was in there. Yeah, I was working 16 or 20 hours. So you just had the same company on the desktop and it's so really nice. Okay. Yeah. So what they did. Yeah, so All right, so at this point, we've written we've written here a few lines of code to create um, that H1 tag, a picture, a paragraph, and if you got to this point, also a link. Basically, this was like the this was the most high tech thing in 1989. This was a website, amazing, at that point. But actually, the very first websites had a gray background, and now they've got a white background. But here's a very basic website, and it's the, um, the same concepts that were invented back in 1989. Um, we're going to take a short break. When we come back then, we'll now start to explore the other aspect of modern websites, which is CSS, which is, this looks really boring. I want colors. I want drop shadows. I want cool stuff. So it's 8.01. Let's take a five-minute break. Um, we'll be back at 8.06-ish. And then when we come back, we'll write some CSS.